Honourable Member for Regina Capel. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and I'd like to thank my colleague for agreeing to share his time with me. I think it's very important for Canadians to understand that this is in no way that the government's reaction, the government's proposal to invoke the Emergency Measures Act is in no way connected to public safety, to restoring order, or to upholding the rule of law. We know this because we know what they've done with previous protests and blockades. When the Prime Minister agrees with the aims of protesters, he does nothing. In fact, actually, it's, it's, it would be unfair to say he does nothing. He does nothing to end the blockades. He actually will send negotiators. He'll actually send government delegations to meet with protesters and even propose settlements and compromises when he agrees with the political aims of those protesting. We know this because in 2020, anti-energy protesters, anti-oil and gas worker uh, protesters held up vital transportation links for weeks, Madam Speaker. At the time, the Prime Minister had a much different tone. Let's take a look at what he said when vital transportation links, when rail lines were blockaded, crippling the Canadian economy for weeks and weeks at a time. He said, and I quote, therefore we are creating a space for peaceful, honest dialogue with willing partners. Compare that to the rhetoric and inflammatory language that he has used over the past several weeks here in 2022. Make no mistake, Madam Speaker, the protests that are happening in Ottawa and that have taken place across the country are a direct result of the Prime Minister's actions and his rhetoric. The demonization of people who are fighting to get their rights back. After two years of incredible hardship, two years of politicians and government agencies telling people that they weren't allowed to have family members visit them inside their own home. After two years of governments telling business owners that they had to keep their doors shut and their employees laid off. After years of people not able to use the very support systems that they've had in their life, relying on friends and family. Gyms closed. Activities for children cancelled. After two years of this, just as there is hope on the horizon, as other jurisdictions around the world and even here in Canada were lifting restrictions and easing mandates, the Prime Minister added a new one. Exactly. He added a new restriction after two years of telling truck drivers that they were essential services, that they were be allowed to travel across the border to bring vital goods into our markets. After two years, of deeming them that essential service, just as there was hope and reasons to lift restrictions and mandates, the Prime Minister added a new one without any data to back it up, without any evidence to back it up. Then when people started objecting to this, finally saying enough is enough, we want our freedoms back, Madam Speaker. It's time for the government to retreat back to the normal boundaries of government interference in our lives. When people started doing that, started to, to, to gather together to peacefully protest against government overreach, what did the Prime Minister do? He called them names, tried to smear them with broad brushes. He called them racists and misogynists. He asked the question, the rhetorical question, Madam Speaker, about whether or not we should tolerate these people. Madam Speaker, I'd like to ask the Prime Minister a question. What does not tolerating these people look like? Exactly. Because what he's done over the past few weeks has just been shameful. This Prime Minister has, has lowered the office in which he serves to unprecedented depths. In my 17 years of being a member of Parliament, I've never seen a Prime Minister, for that matter any other politician, so debase the office that they hold, hurling insults at people. Referring to a, a Jewish member of this House as standing with people waving swastikas. Just outrageous, Madam Speaker. And I have to find, I have to tell my honourable colleagues in the Liberal benches who have often admonished their political opponents for in any way, you know, even sharing the same postal code as someone who may be holding an, un uh, an offensive flag or, or a placard with unacceptable language on it. And when Conservatives denounce that, that's not good enough for members of the Liberal Party. They say, you know, you sh you, you, you're, you're supposed to paint the entire group protesting with that broad brush. But 
Madam Speaker, they don't hold themselves to that same standard. I see many honourable members across the way, some of, which, some of whom I've served with. I know them to be honourable people. I don't assume that they are all racists just because their leader has performed racist acts by putting on blackface so often in his life that he can't remember how many times he's done it. We don't paint every single Liberal member of Parliament with that brush. They have no problem being photographed with the Prime Minister, despite his history of racist acts. So neither should members of Parliament hold or paint the entire group of people who are protesting for their freedoms back with that same broad brush. The lengths at which this government, and indeed not just the government, but many of their friends in the corporate media, to paint every single person who's protesting, who's, who's demanding an end to the restrictions and an end to mandates with that broad brush, Madam Speaker. You look at the lengths that they go to to, to, uh, to discredit and to, uh, and to dehumanize those people who are just fighting for their traditional civil liberties. And I ask you, Madam Speaker, who, if, if we kind of look at this in t two different groups, on the one hand, you've got people who are saying after two years of hardship, two years of sacrifice, two years of being forced to comply with unprecedented government intrusion in our lives, unprecedented, you know, government's telling you where you can go, uh, who you can have in your house, that, that, that is a, a new level of government interference in our life that we have not seen in recent Canadian history. After two years of that, there's a group of people who are saying, I just don't believe I should be fired for making a health care decision. Then on the other hand, you've got a group of people who are saying that anybody who holds that view is a racist, a misogynist, an insurrectionist, Madam Speaker. You've got a group of people who are saying that government should have the ability to tell you who you can have in your house, whether or not your business is allowed to stay open. Which group seems more unreasonable, Madam Speaker? I would say after two years, those who are fighting against this government intrusion in their lives have a legitimate case to be made. Whether or not we agree with them or not, we must respect their right to advocate for their views. The Prime Minister has not provided any legitimate justification for bringing in the Emergencies, uh, Emergency Measures Act. He asks us to trust him. He says, don't worry. We're going to make sure everything's fine with the courts. We're going to make sure everything's compliant with the Charter. This is the same guy who fired his Attorney General because she wouldn't go along with his plans to interfere in a criminal court case, Madam Speaker. So you will pardon, you will pardon the members of the Conservative Party if we're not going to take the Prime Minister's word that he's not going to abuse the power that he's granting himself. He points to specific incidences, specific incidences that Conservatives also denounced. We denounced the rail blockades in 2020, and we denounced the border blockades in 2022. Because, Madam Speaker, we do not believe that the right to peacefully protest should mean that you get to infringe on the freedom and rights of other people. But when we raised that point in 2020, calling on the government to do something about the rail blockades when it was the anti-energy workers, who, by the way, there are a lot of radical left-wing protests across the country where you see all kinds of placards, anti-Semitic placards. You see banners advocating violence committed against police officers. You don't see the government rushing to crack down on that. They're talking about foreign funding, Madam Speaker. How about the foreign funding that's poured into Canada by the mil hundreds of millions to help groups fight against energy projects and natural resource, resource projects across the country? Didn't seem to bother the government then, Madam Speaker. But now all of a sudden they say that they've got to do something about it. It's a little bit like that scene in Casablanca when the inspector comes to, to Rick and says, sorry, I have to close the, the place down. Uh, there's illegal gambling going on. And then the croupier comes over and puts his winnings in his pocket. That's what this government is doing. For years, they've relied on foreign funding coming to, to help their allies in the political spectrum fight for their goals and fight against Canadians and their interests. So, Madam Speaker, I'm just going to close on this. This is the exact same playbook that we've seen dictatorial governments across the country. They dehumanize their opponents. They, have, uh, they, they invoke threats of foreign influence. Remember, the Berlin Wall was built to keep others out, ostensibly. 
Governments always talk about their good intentions when they take away rights and liberties. But I'm asking Canadians not to be fooled by this. And I'm asking members of the Liberal Party who actually believe in civil liberties, who actually do believe in the natural limits of government, to do the right thing. Questions and comments. By the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Sport. I had to just rush back into the House. I was sitting in the lobby and listening to that speech, and I just couldn't believe how willing the member from Regina Capel was to just justify, justify all these behaviours we're seeing. I saw a video of him crossing the road this morning giving a thumbs up and shaking hands with people who have been occupying uh, this, this, this capital city for, for the last three weeks. And I, I, my direct question to the member is, if this was happening in Regina, if his you know, neighbours were being occupied and harassed downtown and were afraid to leave their homes, would your position be exactly the same as it is here? Would you be giving them a thumbs up every single day? Speak to the chair, if you don't, the honourable member, the honourable member for Regina Capel. This member comes from a caucus whose leader sent a delegation to protesters. He's saying that I shouldn't wave back to people who wave to me. Your gov his government actually sent a minister with a mandate to negotiate. Madam Speaker, I'm Canadian. I'll wave at people when they wave to me. I'll say hello to people who say hello to me. When I have constituents who have left their homes to come and fight for their freedoms, I will listen to them. I will be civil. Because if the government had started off this whole thing with that type of attitude, we might not even be having this debate today, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for St. Cyr St. Bedgood. Thank you, Madam Speaker. As you know, the Conservatives in the Bloc are both going to vote against the motion today, but there's something that I'd like to understand. In 2012, 10 years ago, there was a student crisis in Quebec, uh, and there were partisans of the Conservative Party who said, come on, let's go in with the hard line. And uh, th so, same thing, uh, in, in 2020, the Bloc uh, tabled a uh, motion to apologize to victims of the uh, War Measures Act, but uh, the Conservatives uh, voted against our motion. So all of a sudden there's this truckers protest, so why, when it's the Conservatives' grassroots base that is uh, in play, then all of a sudden the hard line doesn't apply? Uh, the, ooh, because, and they even say that climate change doesn't exist. Madam Speaker, the, my, my honourable colleague, uh, first of all, I will start off my remarks by uh, thanking the members of the Bloc Quebec Club, because we agree, we disagree on many things philosophically, but it's nice to know that even if we d disagree on policy, that there's still some common ground on the principles about using the sledgehammer that the government's brought in. But the member is invoking a, 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 a series of events that happened in 2012. The Conservative Party didn't bring in the Emergency Measures Act in 2012. Mm -hmm. It's legitimate. There are going to be protests across, this, across the country, across time, where various parties are going to agree with the aims of the protests or disagree. And we can all express our opinion about whether or not those protests are, should be happening. But the government should not be bringing in this massive sledgehammer to crack down on dissent when there are existing laws. The Prime Minister talked about coots. That was resolved. Thank you, Madam I appreciate the indulgence. The Prime Minister talked about the Coots border crossing. It was resolved with existing laws, with existing tools that law enforcement have. There's no need for this act. Friends and comments, the Honourable Member for Sandwich Girl Silence. Thank you, Madam Speaker. To the Honourable Member for Regina Capel, I found his speech disturbing at many levels. Uh, there were more dog whistles to a rabid base of Trump supporters in one short speech than I've heard in a, ever in this place. But I'd like to correct the record and ask the Honourable Member to consider that when the Government of Canada sent a delegation, it was because the Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs have Supreme Court of Canada on their side, that they have a continuity of leadership, territorial responsibility that goes back to our Constitution, Supreme Court of Canada, the Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs required that both British Columbia and the Government of Canada, in the honour of the Crown, sent representatives to discuss the situation with them. They were not protesters, they were chiefs. For Regina Capel. Well, Madam Speaker, I believe 
the Honourable Member may be the only member of this House who's actually arrested for participating in an illegal protest. So for her to now somehow justify the Emergency Measures Act, would she have appreciated it while she was breaking laws and getting arrested if the government had the power to freeze her bank account, Madam Speaker? Would she have appreciated anybody who made a donation to the Green Party at that time having their bank accounts frozen for supporting her illegal activities, Madam Speaker? I doubt it. Yeah.